morning elect i'm here to give a study this morning the study will be the little book of instructions and we're going to start our study this morning in revelation chapter 10 starting with verse 8 and the voice which i heard from heaven spoken to me again and said go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth this being a little book as in a booklet a booklet is a small book consisting of a few sheets with paper covers which contains information about something it is open in the hand as in power of the angel it is not sealed this uh, this being that spiritual messenger standeth as to a point bring continue covenant establish the sea being the people's multitudes, nations, and tongues, and people, the earth as in firm. And I went unto the angel, and I said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy, thy mouth sweet as honey. Uh, give me the little book that, that will contain the information about something. Take it, it takes effort, and eat it up, consume it, take it into your being, and it shall make thy belly bitter. Um, bitter also means wormwood. But it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey, because it will be truth. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and I ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. I took as to take action out of the angel's hand as in power, and I ate it up as to consume it, take it in and um and and digested it the mouth will be that mouthpiece that will hold the angel's message that will contain the information about something and as soon as i had eaten it my belly was bitter because that little book will contain the judgments and he said unto me thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings and he said unto me because he took this information into his being, consumed it, he, he will now prophesy this information again. This information was spoken before. The peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues is what the beast will rise up out of. This is where the judgments will take place. And then we're going to go over to Exodus uh, chapter 14, starting with verse 1. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Moses meaning drawn out of the waters, on these being the flood waters of lies of deceit of the perverse spirit of Egypt. Uh, speak unto the children of Israel that they turn and encamp before uh, Pihira between Migdal and the sea over against baal Siphon, before it, it shall you encamp by the sea. This being the children of Israel, he is to speak to Israel, representing of the spirit of Yahweh. He will rule as God, listening to that spiritual side of man, not the flesh side as in Jacob. Jacob had two sides. There was Israel speaking, and then there was Jacob speaking. Pihira, uh, meaning um, to cleave or break apart what one does with a sword, meaning the, um, the mouth, as in the edge of the sword, protruding from the white horse's mouth of Revelation 19, verse 15. And out of, out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he shall smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Also means to be hot, burn with anger, ignite in an emotional way. Also to grow white, the snorting of a horse, the mouth of a, a cavern. Migdal meaning to be strong, a great tower, as to keep lookout towers. Um, over time, towers developed into central storage houses, banks, seats of governments, towers and buildings around which the greatness of people forms, meaning greatness or great one. Uh, over against Baal Siphon, meaning to exercise dominion over, lord over. A covering as an overlay like gold. How art thou this head of gold? Also a tower as in the Tower of Babylon. Genesis 11. Watchman gaze describes a honeycomb structure, hexagonal cells on which honey floats on top uh, to hide, store up um, as a rock dwelling animal, the rock badger, the coney rabbit, which is closely related to the elephant. They have tusks like teeth before it. Uh, shall you encamp by the sea? It is what he was. It is what he was to consume. Take it and eat it up. Consume it, and then three. 
And for Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. Pharaoh being who enslaved the people to his walls and commands to serve him over Yahweh. Um, and then we're going to hold your place there. I'm just going to read of that in Exodus uh, chapter 1, um, starting with verse 8. And now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Pharaoh um, being who enslaved the people... Um, rose up as to ascend up over the people which knew not joseph joseph being um the shepherd the stone of israel genesis 49 verse 24 joseph meaning may he add the increaser joseph was the one who built the storehouses to save them from the famine he was elevated above his brethren prophetically being a type of the two witnesses um that will um have the spiritual storehouses built up to sustain them during the spiritual famine uh, that will come when the four winds are released that being when the holy spirit will be withdrawn and will only be in those that have taken of the marriage uh, behold the days come says the lord god that i will send a famine in the land not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water but of hearing the words of the lord and then nine And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we, uh, that being his people, the, the two seed lines. Uh, when God's children start to come forth in the spirit, Satan will come to resist the spirit um, uh, as he did in Genesis 6, um, that being his seed line. And we're going to read of that in Genesis 6, verse 1. And it came to pass that being prophetically, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them, daughters being the spiritual side of man, that the sons of God, these being the angelic beings, saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. They came, became one in marriage, mingling of the seed, uh, to resist the Holy Spirit with their perverse spirit. And the Lord said, My spirit, as in my Holy Spirit, shall not always strive with man. For he is also flesh, because he chose to, be, to remain flesh over the spirit. When the four winds are released, um, that will put us in another dimension of time. That will be that seventh dimension of time when we are to become one in the spirit with Yahweh. Satan is coming to resist that to keep you in the six day man uh, yet his day shall be 120 years 120 means a divinely appointed time of waiting when god will save 12,000 from each tribe of israel that they these will be the ones that will come forth in the spirit and then i'm going to read um, revelation 12 starting with verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels, and they prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out onto the earth, and his uh, angels were cast out uh, with him. And then verse 10. And it come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. So get them up out of the land, out of the land. Wisely as to be wiser um, as, as uh, in the seed line of, of the serpent. Now the serpent was more subtle um, than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Uh, he was... Uh, um, with subtility, as in crafty, cunning, uh, with deceit, lies. Um, this will be, be the war of the mouths, uh, truth against lies and deceit. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens, and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Phiathom and Ramses, taskmasters as in governors, as in one that exercises authority over an area or a group, to afflict them as to submit, with their burdens, prophetically the governors um, that were given power over the people. This happened when the star wormwood fell that brought the calamities, that brought the laws, that brought the burdens. Um, and we're going to read of that in Revelation 8. Starting with verse 10. 
And the angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. It's not the lamp, but it burns as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. Uh, and Wormwood means bitterness, but it also means a calamity. A calamity is an event that causes often um, sudden, um, great, in, um, sudden disaster, distress, destruction. We know destruction to be Apollyon, Abaddon. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. That sudden disaster, distress, destruction that came upon us is the coronavirus. Corona meaning crown, crown being a circular headdress worn by a monarch as a symbol of authority. That, um, that being when they brought their um, laws of the man savior. They instead built Pharaoh treasure cities, as like Joseph, to resist the storehouses of truth. Python, the sun god, was where they kept their grain chambers. It was built of bricks by the enslaved people. They have recently discovered the ruins of bricks uh, without straw. Ramses meaning son of, son of the sun. And then 12, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Joseph, meaning, may he add, the increaser, um, they um, are that they are um, that holds the treasure house of truth. Uh, Joseph was um, embalmed as to be um, preserved. Uh, his truths are preserved for um, now. And there was given me a reed like unto a rod, and the angel stood, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship um, therein. And they were grieved as to be disgusted, anxious. And he says unto me, The waters which thy sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thy sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. They will hate those that whore after them. They will use their wisdom over them with deceit and lies. The, um, those that don't think for themselves, they will be thinking they are being healed by them, but instead they will be enslaved and spiritually murdered by them. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor, rigor as in strictness, demanding extreme conditions. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage and mortar and in brick and all manner of service in the field. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor, bitter as to be moved with collier, a bondage as in servitude, all their service wherein they made, uh, they serve as to enslave, worship was with rigor, as in strictness, demanding extreme conditions. In verse 11, they set up governors to afflict them as to submit, this being when the star of wormwood fell that brought the bitterness, that brought the laws, that brought the power of the governors, that brought the servitude to their laws. They have set up over the people, that being when the beast, um, rose up out of the sea of people this bitterness of hard bondage will come when the second beast rises up from the earth this being the two horns as in a power like a lamb he is coming in as the savior of the people that lamp this is when he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and he causeth the earth and them the which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed it will have seemed that it would have it has received a deadly wound that it will be no more there will be that reprieve time when their laws will be relaxed but then he will come that has been that will be that spirit of satan entering the into the vessel he chooses to resist the spirit of yahweh uh, being the two witnesses this will be the second part of the lord's day the first part is the elijah ministry to prepare you for this event um, this being the second two and a half months when the supernatural realm will be opened up. This is when he will inflict their hard bondage. Their, um, their lives will be um, bitter. This being that star wormwood. This will be that fourth kingdom in Daniel that will be strong as iron. For as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things. And as iron that breaketh all, these shall it break in pieces and bruise. And deceiveth them that dwelleth on the earth by the means of these miracles. 
these being those healing miracles by the god of Asclepius, the god of medicine, the serpent entwined around the rod, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that you should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And then we're going to go back to Exodus 14, um, verse uh, 4. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Uh, uh, and upon his host. In chapter 1, verse 9, uh, he said unto his people, Now it is his host, this being when the spirits inhabit the host. Uh, the angels, as in the spirits that were cast out with Satan, that dragon in Revelation 12, verse 9. Egypt being those that are of the perverse spirit. The Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof and have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. They do so as in the perverse spirit followed them. And it, and it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled in the heart of the of Pharaoh and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this that we have let Israel go from serving us? That being that reprieve time. It will, it will seem as if it received a deadly wound. God is allowing this time um, before the Antichrist comes that will um, enforce these laws with rigor. God uh, wants his people to feel the freedom that comes by him as your Savior. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled. As with that yoke of bondage, that being from verse 3, they are entangled in the land. Before Jesus died on the cross, God's people lived under a detailed system of laws that served as a moral compass to grieve their lives. Jesus came to free us from the burden of the laws of man. Uh, when we take on uh, the spiritual man, uh, that being at the seventh dimension of time, we will be free from the laws um, of the six-day man. Um, the laws will be now written in our heart. Um, but Satan will try to keep man listening to man's laws um, by the laws he will set up as a savior of man to burden us, keep us in, keeping, them, keeping us in his yoke. And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him, uh, that being supernaturally. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. Um, in Judges 18, verse 11, and there went from thence of the family of the Danites. When Dan, when the tribe of Dan was to take the land of their inheritance, um, instead of conquering it, they, they mingled their seed with the idolatrous nations, the uncircumcised nations. They committed, uh, um, spiritual, uh, um, they committed idolatry. He also that received seed among thorns is he that beareth the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he, um, and he becometh unfruitful. When David was, faced, was forced to flee from the presence of King Saul, that being prophetically being the man king over the king God has... <laughs> my dog scared me. Uh, the king over the king God has appointed as, um, as in David, the beloved, one after God's own heart. There come to David 600 men to serve under him and to fight for him against the enemies of Israel. These men were faithful to David and proved themselves to be uh, worthy soldiers. Thou therefore en endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. These 600 proved to be faithful even under adversity. And when you uh, prove your faithfulness, the Lord will increase your responsibilities in his army. And we're going to just read, I'm, I just feel I need to read that in 2 Timothy 4, um, verses 6 through 8. For I am now ready to be offered in the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but to all them also that love his appearing. 
And then we have the staff of Goliath. It was a spear, like a weaver's beam, and his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. And it was, with its size and strength was no match for David with his sling. Goliath relied on his strength to wage war, but David relied upon the Lord's strength to deliver him in battle. We are to go as David in our faith and our God to deliver us, and his giants will fall. And King Solomon made 200 targets of beaten gold. 600 shekels went to one target, and he made 300 shields of beaten gold. Three pounds of gold went to one shield. The target is a body shield to protect against arrows and spears. It is used to protect in hand-to-hand -hand combat. A pound of gold is equal to a hundred shekels. The target was made of six pounds of gold and the shield was made of three pounds of gold. These be in the king's targets and the king's shields. Our king Jesus Christ has promised for us the armor we need to be good soldiers for his army. We are to fight the good fight of faith. Above all, take in the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, that the trial of your faith, that will be what you'll be tried on by faith, being much, much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it um, be tried by fire, might be found unto praise and honor and the glory of the appearing of Jesus Christ. And then nine, but the Egyptians pursued after them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army overtook them and camping by the sea uh, beside um, Piahira um, before Baal uh, Saphon, um, just as in verse two, and overtook them, uh, setting, uh, setting slaves go would have two effects. Slaves would be forced back into the wilderness uh, whose ways they have forgotten and the dangers could uh, quickly kill them. And the second, the host society would lose its productive uh, foundation and would come crashing down. And then 10, and when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold, the Egyptians marched after them and they were sore afraid and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Prophetically, this will be when the four winds are released that will open up the supernatural realm. We will be greatly outnumbered then. They will be a well-organized army. They shall run like mighty men because they are supernatural. They will climb the walls. That's when they will climb in uh, to the windows of our souls like men of war. And they shall march everyone on his ways and they shall not break their ranks. God's people are not being um, warned of this. Uh, that, so when they come, they will be um, not prepared and fear will come, overcome them. And they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, has thy taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore has thy dwelt dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. Um, the wilderness is where you are to go after you leave the perverse spirit of um, Egypt, where you were enslaved to their laws of man, Savior. A wilderness is a solitary place where you are to listen to the one God, the voice of Yahweh, not as God's, meaning many voices speaking for God. The wilderness is where you are to die to the flesh. That is where we are to take off the flesh, the Gentile, putting on our celestial, uh, uh, the circumcised, uh, that being the covenant. You must be willing to sacrifice your fleshly bodies as living sacrifices for Yahweh to dwell in, to be as mouthpieces against Pharaoh's host. Um, but they would rather stay in the perverse spirit, um, the covenant being the circumcision of your heart, opening up your heart to let him in, to sup with you. And, the, and Moses said unto the people, Fear you not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. Stand still, shut up and listen. Stop speaking as gods and listen to your heavenly father. And then you will see as to spiritually see the salvation of the Lord, Yahweh. 
um, then he will open it up to you. Uh, you have to, to, to listen to him first. And I'm, then I'm going to go over to 1 Samuel, um, verse 17, 45 through 47. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into, thy, into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And then 14. And the Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. You shall hold your peace. Uh, let him fight. You are to shut up and let him fight. This being that war of the mouths. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. This being when God will give that battle call to go forward. Uh, when he gives that battle call, you go forward. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thy hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Um, that being that the rod for judgments of the little book of Revelation 10. And he said unto me, Thy must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. The people's multi multitudes, nations, and tongues are those that serve the beast that rose up out of the sea. And there was given me a reed like a rod. Stretch out thy hand as in power over the sea and divide it. This will bring that dividing um, those that will listen and come out and those that will uh, stay enslaved. And the children of Israel, meaning he will rule as God, not man, shall go on dry ground. And as soon as they were come to the land, they saw a fire of coals there and fish laid thereon and bread. When God's children listen and come out of the sea, that is when they will be fed the meat of truth because they have left that perverse spirit that will they will be able to now receive the Holy Spirit. He will open up your eyes to it. But you have to listen to him first. And I, and I beheld, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor among Pharaoh and upon all his host, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood before them. This angel is in a spiritual messenger that will provide these truths truths that be in that little book of judgments, their testimony to this Babylonian system will be removed. The angel's work will now be done, went behind them. They are now to go forward as the judges for Israel, that being the true Judah, those that are those that um, uh, will hold that ruling scepter. They will act as judges to present these judgments to this Babylonian system. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest of matters? The pillar of the cloud went um, uh, before their face and stood before, behind them. They are covered with his protection, his shield of faith. Um, 20 and it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel and it was a cloud and darkness to them but it gave light by night to these so that the one come not near the other all the night the camps will be divided the light as in spiritual illumination spiritual intellect of the Holy Spirit of light and light um, and darkness as in misery wickedness obscurity as in the state of being unknown and hidden they will not be able to see the light. It will not be open to them. You have to be, you have to um, shut your mouths and listen before it will. 
And the Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. The sea had to go back, retreat, the east wind being dry, hot. Uh, it can be fierce. It, it scatters and it sweeps the people. A east wind from the Lord will come, blowing in from the desert. His, um, his spring will fail and his well will dry up. His storehouse will be plundered of all its treasures. This will happen when the four winds are released. His Holy Spirit will be withdrawn. The, that storehouse will be um, finished. Uh, the waters will be divided. There are those that will drink from Jacob's well who will thirst again. And then there will those that receive his living waters that that will be a well springing up into everlasting life. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground. The waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. When God gives a command to go forth, the seas will have to part. Those that are of that beast system that elevated his laws and, and on keep them when they will um, when they will enforce these laws again with rigor, um, they will have no power over God's children because they will walk right through. Uh, they will not be, be prevented because they will walk on the dry ground. Um, they are not of that um, of the sea. Uh, they will have that firm foundation. The right side being the spiritual side and the left side being that weak side. Um, the weakness of man, um, that six-day man, um, that division. Um, 24, and it came to pass that in the morning uh, watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians. Uh, host as in those that have the perverse spirit, the host that will hold that perverse spirit. Uh, that being when he mingled the scene as in Genesis 6. And they took off their chariot wheels that they drove them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel for the Lord fight if, uh, against the Egyptians. In verse 19, that being that pillar of cloud that went from before their face and stood behind them. And the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thy hand over the sea that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Uh, to his strength when the morning appeared, this being of that morning star. And God said, let the waters under the heaven as in celestial be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called the seas. And God saw that it was good. He has power over them. 28. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them, uh, as in one of them, that being um, those that of the perverse spirit, not of the Holy Spirit. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Uh, their power over them will be dead. It will be no more. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, as in celestial, and as the sand of the seashore. And thy seed, as in the stars, shall possess the gate of his enemies." And Israel saw that the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant Moses. Moses meaning drawn out of the waters. And then 15.1, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider, rider has he thrown into the sea. This being that horse, as in that supernatural one, his rider being the host that will hold his perverse spirit. 
um, the Antichrist, who will come to resist Yahweh, that will be on that white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. And then two, the Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him a habitation, my father's God, and I will exalt him. Uh, this being Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, of the spirit that, will, that must enter a host. Jesus told the woman at the well. She was the first one to recognize him in the spirit. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And he has become my salvation. They understand that Jesus Yeshua Savior has already come. He walked among us in the flesh and he died on the cross, he defeating death. That is the devil, and he now sits on the right hand of God till he comes in the spirit to judge and make war. That will be when he enters into the two witnesses. That will be his mouthpiece on earth. Who will, um, it will be, um, he will be that priest, high priest Melchizedek. Um, and then um, the two witnesses will present Yahweh to the elect, and then the, the elect will, uh, will present Yahweh to the 144,000, and I will prepare him a habitation, that being within our vessels, being the Lord of hosts, Emmanuel, God with us, him being that spirit of Yahweh, our heavenly father. And then three, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. That being when he comes in in the spirit, he is coming, um, he is not coming for salvation. He is coming to, uh, to judge and make war. The Elijah ministry will, will prepare you for this event, to have you turn your hearts to the fathers, choosing your heavenly father or your fleshly father. Israel or Jacob. Pharaoh's chariots and his host has he cast into the sea. His chosen captains also are drowned in the Red Sea. The depths have covered them. They sank into the bottom as stone. They sank as to descend. God's children ascend. They walk on dry land. That being that stone of stumbling, it will not have any more power over God's children. Thy right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy. Right hand being that spiritual side is thrown on earth. He sits on the right hand of God. And in the greatness of thy excellency, thy has overthrown them that rose up against thee. Thy sinnest forth thy wrath, which consumed them as stubble. And with the blast of thy nostrils, the waters were gathered together. The flood stood upright as a heap, and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy said, I will pursue, I will overtake, I will divide the spoil. My lust shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword, my hand shall destroy them. I being said three times, Thou didst blow with thy wind, the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters, uh, because they are earthly of gravity, not of the stars that lift up, not con they um that are not controlled by gravity, held down. This um as the six day man. This being um the mighty um flood waters of their lies and deceit. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like um, thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Thy stretches out thy right hand, the earth swallowed them. Thou in thy mercy has led forth the people which thy has redeemed. Thy has guided them in thy strength into thy holy habitation. It is the Lord who will guide his children. You are to rely on your, your guide. You do not go ahead of your guide. This being the holy habitation that only he can guide you to, to redeem them from their fleshly prisons. Uh, that From that stone of stumbling that stands in front of the sepulcher is now at the bottom of the sea. They can come forth out of their spiritual prisons, uh, their fleshly prisons uh, to the spirit, to that holy habitation. The people shall hear and be afraid. Sorrow shall take hold on the inhabitants of Palestinia. Palestinia means to dig in, into or roll around on the dust, uh, in the dirt, uh, due to grief. Edom, um, and then the dukes of Edom shall be amazed. The mighty men of Moab, trembling, shall take hold upon them. 
All the inhabitants of Canaan shall made a, melt away. Um, Edom meaning red, um, to produce or be red as in the blood, the seed of life, red being of the sixth day man of just blood and water. This is he that come by water and blood. Even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it's the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. Moab being those that um, served their fleshly father and Canaan meaning merchant, trade, syncrasity, um, these being the soul merchandisers. Fear and dread shall fall upon them by the greatness of thy arm. They shall be still as a stone till thy people pass over. O Lord, till the people pass over which thou hast purchased. That stone that has stood in their way as a stumbling block will no longer be able to block them. They will go around it and pass over. They will be um, armed, armored uh, by the power of God. Um, God's children will uh, ha now um, have. Um, they are... Because they have been redeemed. Thy from their fleshly prisons. Thy shall bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thy inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which thy has made um, th thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. These That be in that holy habitation, that secret place of the Most High. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. It is the Lord that now will reign in righteousness, not in lies and deceit. That will be done. It will be over with. Uh, for the Lord, for the horse of Pharaoh went in and with his chariots and with his horsemen into the sea. And the Lord brought again the waters of the sea upon them. But the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. God's children will come out of those flood waters by the Lord, their guide, their shepherd, leading them to the secret place of the Most High. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, 20. And Myram the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. Myram being the Egyptian word for the beloved. The beloved is to become one with the beloved, the bride of Christ. Um, but this is the Egyptian name. It, Egypt being of the perverse spirit, for the Lord has mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof, and have caused Egypt to err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. Myram meaning to be rebellious, disobedient, to be strong, bitter, gall, poison. The prophetess as a spiritual leader. All the women went out, as in that um, secret place of the Most High. They went out with her. She being that prophetess. An Egyptian, in my name, in Egypt, in, for the beloved. And Myram answered them, um, Sing you to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has he thrown into the sea. We are not to come out of the secret place of the Most High. Even though they claim to sing to the Lord, when God's children start to come forth, leaving the perverse spirit into truth, there will be those false prophets that will lead them back to man. You are to discern. And Myram answered them, seeing you, um, and, and so Moses um, brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness, and they found no water. Moses, meaning drawn out of the perverse waters, um, brought Israel, as in those that serve Yahweh, not man. Israel, he will rule as God from the Red Sea, as in that red nation that serves man. Sure, which is um, is a line of wall uh, is a was a line of uh, of a wall built by the Egyptians. This is where Hagar uh, fled to. Three days in the Holy Spirit. Three as in the Holy Spirit. That being um, where um, the Holy Spirit will lead you into the wilderness is where you are to go to to be able to listen to the voice of Yahweh. Um, uh, discerning um, the the two voices um, and um, taking you away from man's voice. The wilderness is where the spiritual angel will present the hidden manna, the living waters. Um, they found no water. You have to desire of the living waters. 
you have to ask for it as in that woman at the well she being that first one that recognized the voice of Yahweh and at, and asked um, of the living waters she left her water pot of, at Jacob's well to take of it and we're going to read of her in John 4 And uh, we're going to start with verse 6. Now Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. The sixth hour is still the sixth dimension of time when man can labor and still do all his work. There cometh a woman of Samaria. Samaria meaning Watch Mountain. She's on watch, so he's coming to visit her. Uh, she's coming to draw water, and Jesus says unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. We are to come out of the city, um, and we are not to buy meat. We are to wait for the meat. The meat will be provided to us in the last two and a half months when um, the spirit, when uh, Yahweh will inhabit the vessel he chooses to speak through, being the two witnesses. Then says the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, ask of drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. And Jesus answered and said unto her, uh, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that says to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. And the woman said unto him, Sir, thou has nothing to draw with, and the well is deep from whence thou hast this living water. Uh, uh, she is not discerning yet who is speaking to her. Um, Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Uh, now she's discerning that he is greater than father Jacob, being the heel grabber, the supplanter. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. That uh, be in Jacob's well. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And the woman says unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come in hither to draw. And, the, and then Jesus says unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. Before he can provide her of this living water, she, uh, he, she has to recognize him as her, her husband, the provider. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus says unto her, Thy as well said, I have no husband. For thy has had five husbands, five meaning grace, and he whom thy now has is not thy husband, and that said is thy truly, because he is her husband, her spiritual husband. And the woman says unto him, Sir, I perceive that thy art a prophet. She perceives that he is the anointed one. Christos, our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is a place where men ought to worship. Jerusalem being a condition of truth. Uh, Jerusalem shall be called a, a city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. But Jesus says unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Um, when the four winds are released, God's Holy Spirit will be withdrawn and will only be in those that have taken of the marriage. You worship, you know not. We know what we worship for the salvation is of the Jews, um, that being those that are of Judah, that will come forth first in the spirit. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. He is seeking those out that understand that he's a spirit. He's the Lord of hosts. He has to enter into a vessel. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the woman says unto him, Either the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ, when he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus says unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. I being Yahweh that is speaking to him through that vessel of Jesus. And then we're going to skip to 28. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city. And, he, and says unto the men, these being those men that went into the city to buy meat. In verse 8. Come, see a man which told me all things that I ever did. Is not this the Christ, as in Christos? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. They listened to her, she being that prophetess. Um, 
Myram in verse 20, but now um, they are listening uh, to her. And when they came to uh, Mara, they could not drink of the waters of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. Mara meaning of the sea, bitter, prophetically being that of the star of wormwood that fell, that brought the bitterness, that brought the calamity, that brought the laws to serve the man king over Yahweh. Uh, you are um, to receive of his living waters. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? The, um, this being the people of verse 22, Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. These being the people as in the people's multitudes, nations, and tongues that serve man. They, will mur they murmur against Moses. They resist him. 25, and he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which was when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. Uh, because it is the Lord... Um, it is the Lord who is to lead the people, not man. This being the tree of life, that being whatsoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. These being his laws and righteousness, not the laws of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that came to resist the tree of life. These two trees are that will bring life, one that will bring life and one that will bring death. Revelation 10, verse 9. When you take and consume the little book, it will make your belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. There he proved them. Um, that being that little book of um, instructions. Um, you are to leave the perverse spirit of Egypt, spiritual Egypt, Babylon, of um, lies and confu confusion into truth. Um, you, that proving, that testing um, in faith. Believe it in something that you cannot see, but, but you still believe in that spirit. 26. And said, if thy diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in the sight, and will give ear to his command commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am, am the Lord that healeth thee. The diseases that came when the star wormwood fell, that brought the laws of the man savior, Asclepius, the Egyptians being of the perverse spirit, these that continue to believe in the lies. For I am, I the spirit um, of Yahweh within the vessel of Im, uh, that being the host that will hold Yahweh, that healeth thee. No man um, is what you will be tested on. Um, man's laws are God's laws. 27. And they came to Elam where were 12 wells of water and three score and 10 palm trees and they encamped there by the waters. Elam meaning protruder as to stick out. This one can um, be um, positive uh, or um, will lead um, to a negative. Um, big trees as in oaks um there are the true two trees two leaders one in truth and one in lies and deceit 12 wells of water 12 representing of god's perfect governmental foundation and truth the nation of israel as a whole a well for each nation of israel 70 palm trees palm trees representing of those that stand up upright that have drunk from the living waters of truth those being those of verses 22 and 23, when they come to Mara, they could not drink of it because it was bitter. They refuse it, and they encamp there by the waters of his governmental foundation and truth, taking of that little book, those that being those that will take in take this little book of instructions into their being and come out and come to, come to Elam, the tree of life. And we're going to end this for today. Uh, left, you have a great day until the morning.